All right, welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the broadcast here, the Kiev Major European Qualifier action continuing to come at you. I'm Breaky CPK once again, joined by Marilina here. And we have our next match now on the list, and this should be a fun one. Team Secret, one of the favorites, no doubt, in a lot of people's minds here to come out of the European region. Going up against Pro Dota Gaming, one of the two open qualifier teams that made it here. But uh, I'm looking forward to this one. What about you, Merlini? Where's Keeper? Five seconds <laughs> you just don't want that Coddle, man. You stress oh, that Coddle pick. Oh, they need him. Well, oh. there you go. That's Secret will pick one. it. Keeper is better than Sordor. Yeah? Yes. That's a, that's a bold statement there, he sir. He is, I think, actually way better than Sordor right now. We've been seeing, uh, obviously, a bit of Keeper as you're getting at, and for good reason, I think. Keeper is sick. Seconds. If they had a Keeper last game instead of Ogre, the game would have been... <laughs> Mega over. <laughs> it would have been so fast. really, really over. Um, but what about the counter, the quote unquote counter of a Night Stalker? I feel like we've actually seen that a little bit too with Keeper coming on the scene. Keeper will crush your lanes. Okay. Whereas Night Stalker can't really do that. And you still have the promo recall, so you can split push. And you still can't like push into a Keeper during night with Night Stalker. Oh, yeah. Like, you still have that problem where your waves just instantly die. die Ooh, Bounty Hunter. First. Face team secret puppy. Up nice. oh, there you go. Team In theory, it's. I wouldn't even call it a soft counter. Honestly, I would count, count call it like, what whatever softer than what's the, what's softer than soft? <laughs> like uh, a velvet. Like I don't even know. Like a like a whipped cream. It's pretty soft. Remaining. Creamy counter. Creamy. Counter. <laughs> that just sounds weird. <laughs> Let's not go with that choice. Uh, I yeah, so softer than soft counter. But your point is, soft. it's really not that big of a deal. It sounds like it's what you're getting at. No, I, but I'm not a keeper player. But okay. from what I've heard, and like playing against Night Soccer, I'm never Ten really scared if I have keeper on my team. I'm like this is great. I have keeper on my team. You're just so happy when you have yeah. keeper on your team. What oh, about bounty man. hunter? Are you happy when you have bounty hunter in your team? Uh, if it's a pilot, I have bounty hunter. Yeah. Okay. Secrets. Pilot, yeah, I, I think Puppy has history planted too, right? Yeah, but okay. I think Puppy's a keeper player. Ah, okay. But I don't know. They've been swapping things up a lot recently. Puppy used to always be the keeper player, but Pilot and Puppy they have a lot of overlap in their heroes, and they are also remaining. actually play. Yeah, they they play both. Five seconds. So remaining. the nice soccer is also a question of where you're going to lane him. Uh, so it used to be Iron Talon. This was popularized by Vici maybe like a Dying year ago. Back. But Iron Talon, straight jungling as a 4, has not really been pop popular that much anymore. So you usually dual offlane him. But you're dual offlaning into a Keeper. Like you can't dual offlane into a Keeper with like Night Stalker or It will get destroyed. Yeah. So no. where do you actually put the Night Stalker? Who knows? I don't know. Uh, a couple of games that we saw again, the open qualifiers. Now, I know that doesn't mean a lot, but I feel like we did see them in the four position usually. Uh, kind of maybe a little bit of that jungle, like I said, the Iron Talon pickup tries There's to jungle a little bit. bounty hunter, though. That's true. The bounty hunter can cause issue there. So Just a lot of issues. Yeah. Maybe not. Uh, may maybe they're overthinking it, perhaps, if you're pro Dota. Because, again, it's like, ah, night counters the day. Yeah, we got the Night Stalker. But like you're suggesting, now where do you lay in it? That, that's kind of going to throw things for a loop. And then you have the Slaughter, which, again, I feel like we've actually seen a lot more four-position Slaughter lately than offlane Slaughter. So if he's going to take that role, then, yeah, where like, is Night Stalker than the offlane? I mean, a lot of questions. A lot of questions. Very few answers so far. Juggernaut, though, uh, going to be coming out here as a core pick for Pro Dota with the Ember Spirit mid-option on the other side. Juggernaut, I actually think, is one of the better ways to deal with the Keeper. The Healing Ward deals with the Illuminate very well when you're actually trying to push. One of the biggest problems about playing Ten against Keeper is remaining. ending the game. You cannot. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to go high ground versus Keeper. It's ridiculous. Five yeah. Ever since the remaining. Chakra reduced cooldown, you have like double Illuminate. That's like a thousand damage. How do you? How do you? How's your creep wave survive that? Uh, healing way. Healing Ward is pretty decent, so your like your pusher like Juggernaut doesn't get destroyed by it and have to heal up. So I. I think it's uh he's pretty good. And he can actually deal with blinding light too by spinning out of it or whatever it may be. Overall a good core, really in many cases, but yeah, justification as to why against the coddle as well being brought up there. The fourth picks for either side now coming out uh, for, for these teams. And I will say Insania loves to play Rubik. Um so I I wouldn't be surprised if that's a pick up here. Now is there a reason why Rubik would be a bad pick, you think? I don't think it 
particularly deals well with Bounty Hunter or Ember Spirit. I think you either want a hero that can just like destroy the Bounty Hunter on sight, um, or a hero that provides more lockdown versus Ember Spirit. I mean, Rubik's never like I, w I wouldn't say he's ever never a bad pick, but I would say there are better picks in this situation. Okay. Well, Secret's been in quite a bit of time, actually, with this fourth pick. I mean, you figure they still need their one in their off lane, most likely, so. Ooh, that's a little different. Chaos Knight. They have no AoE. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Chaos Knight actually has mana issues, too. So with Keeper Chakra, you can just go, like, Treads Armlet and just be completely okay. This stuns a lot of mana. 140, and then your reality rifting a lot. Phantasm's a lot, too, remaining. so. It's one of those cords is like you used to build drums for the mana, but Five now drums is crap, remaining. so there's not that many great items. You can build Helm, but Helm's like not Rooks. that great on him. We talked about it. There we go. I know my boy well. Rubik, it is. Rubik coming out here. Yeah, and Sandy, I love to play that. And come with me, the other support player. And we do see that Wisp band, by the way. Quick note on that. That's that's Team Secret doing a little bit of research in the open qualifiers because uh, we, we cast these guys later on, and I think it was a semifinal matchup, actually. Come with me, dominated with a wisp. It was actually really crazy to see uh, using that spirits to do plenty of damage throughout early ganks, and then obviously with the tether and the re uh, the relocate to certain positions to save and also play offense. It was just crazy how well he was playing it. So understandable that they ban out a comfort hero. Clearly, there. I think they know him personally too. Come with me. He's okay. been seen forever. The same with Garter and Cheshire Cat. They've okay. been like on the tier like three ish EU for forever and. Uh, you just meet them a lot in pubs or random small tournaments all the time, in-house leagues, whatever it may be. And Chaos Knight's yeah. cool, though. Yeah, uh, that's uh, pretty unique, too, and fun to watch. He is uh, he can be entertaining. The uh, Reality Rift pull-in <laughs> stun that he brings, and then uh, his ulti, of course, with the illusion creation of the Phantasm here. Um, lacking AoE, though, as you're talking about, like on the other side, again, Rubik doesn't really, I guess the Fade Bolt can be decent, but... Is that going to be an overall concern you feel like for Pro Dota right now? Oh, definitely. Chaos Knight is always an issue if you don't have any AoE. Invoker is one of the best ones because the illusions can't BKB. And if you get like, like if you get Armlet Heart on CK, you need a way to deal with that. Invoker is one of the better ones. Deafening Boss is really good at dealing with illusions. They don't have magic immunity. Ice Wall, really good at dealing with it. Tornado, really good at dealing with it. Meteor, all of these are really good. But <laughs> other than that, what's a mid hero with AoE that can deal with Chaos Knight? That's not Timber Assault or Invoker. Remaining. OD? OD guess, is kinda. okay, <laughs> but you have to have BKB to deal with it. Result yeah. Which is not ideal, I would say. Magnus, maybe, might be an option, but that's very risky. I don't huh. like it really for certain lineup. I don't really think you can catch anyone. I think Empowered Jug is very strong, though. True. What else would be good? I know he likes to play Storm Spirit, but that is obviously one of those bands there. Yeah, and they need a good lane versus Ember, too. Maybe they just put Jug mid and do a safe laner with AoE, but I don't even know any like safe Like a TA laners. or a Phantom Assassin to one of those routes. But. TA would get dumpstered here so hard. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm, I'm just throwing out random heroes here, all right? See, what's the other one? Uh, Phantom Assassin. Ooh, Phantom Assassin would also get Shadow dumpstered. Fiend. Shadow Fiend is nice. I think pick. it is a very good option. It's like a strong mid laner that scales that has some AoE. That's a good BKB hero, because I think they need a BKB hero for it. Yeah. Mid -laner. That almost seemed like an obvious pick, actually. I'm <laughs> surprised that one of us even brought that up, but yeah, so many, so many heroes in this damn game. Uh, but yeah, definitely one of our obvious ones, and we have been seeing a lot of Shadow Fiend come back on the scene Five recently, so remaining. not surprising to see that here. Uh, final pick. It's really tough for Bounty Hunter, though. Bounty Hunter, Shadow Fiend. Oh, okay. Might be off lane. Enigma. Keizu Enigma. Where's Rubik, too? And Night Stalker. That's not easy. Yeah. That's a real tough Enigma game to actually get your holes, but... This is like the fourth Enigma game I've seen in these last two days. <laughs> I don't know if it's starting to be a trend or something, but... Enigma is very good in my opinion. I think he... Like, not nearly as good as Kato, but I would definitely think he's like top ten supports right now in my book. But Rubik's like picked so commonly nowadays, and some of the scenes really like their silencer. And Warlock is also kind of common too, so mm -hmm. Enigma doesn't very do well versus many of those. Same with Corvenge, I also think is kind of popular, and oh yeah, there's just no way to deal with it well as an Enigma. Yeah. Um, fun fact here as we're loading into the game now, as far as a uh, little bit of a little bit of history, a little bit uh, history with some of these players here. Uh, Keizu, as I mentioned, maybe playing the Enigma, but uh, Keizu. Actually, former teammates with uh, Insania and Mickey back in their Han days. So they do have a little bit of personal history there. 
and know each other very well, and we're successful together. So it's kind of fun seeing them in a matchup against one another now over here, of course, Dota 2, and in a pretty pretty prestigious event, to say the least, the EU qualifier. So looking forward to this one quite a bit. But again, Secret in a lot of people's minds. Talk about that real quickly. I mean, do you feel like Secret's probably the, the team to beat in the European region mm, for these I qualifiers? I think so, yeah. I'm trying to think of any other teams that I, I think guess are really, really good. I think they're one of the best ones. Some of the other favorites, like Bears, I know, has been getting Bears a lot of attention. Yeah. Yeah, I think Bears and Secret would be my two. Yeah. But there can only be one. <laughs> That's true. For Europe, there can only be one. A couple of regions have two, but Ooh, such a Southeast double Asia. Double mangoes on MP. He's a mango man. All right. Likes those mangoes there. You don't see mangoes much anymore. No. Mangoes are not very common. You see one on Jug a lot of the time. Other than that, you don't see many mangoes. But he has Keeper on his team too, which is even more surprising. So Puppy will actually be taking the Bounty Hunter, and Puppy or and Pilot will be taking the Keeper. So Pilot usually plays a four. So I guess this makes a little bit more sense. Whenever I see, especially you know, two mangoes, I mean, it feels like that that means that he's going to be looking to be very aggressive with his abilities, of course, right? Like especially that Chaos Bolt. Yeah, you see clarities though. But yeah, clarities are so value now. Oh my goodness, to 190 mana, it's 190, right? I'm pretty sure it's 190. Can't be taken off by creeps now as well. That's a nice benefit, mm -hmm. especially for junglers that uh, are not aren't are not a thing really. And it can it, even with these Enigma pickups, we've I've actually like I said, it's, it's like the fourth game I've happened to see him in completely different teams. He's, he's always in the off lane though. He's never actually been a jungle Enigma. Lose the lanes, lose the game. Okay. <laughs> That's important. Those good old lanes. Puppy is on the Bounty Hunter here, and he's at the top lane, ready to harass with the Enigma up here and uh, harass some of the supporting cast, I'm sure. He also wanted to block that big spawn. If Enigma is going to be jungling and ditching the off lane, then they want someone to soak it up and to make sure that they don't play Super Greedy. Super Greedy is stacking and pulling both the large camp and the small camp. If they can't stack the large camp, they're actually not getting that much out of it if Enigma is able to free from the jungle. And Puppy is so good experience. I actually think Secret wins out in this scenario. Yeah. So and he denied the range creep. So that's fun. So bottom lane, though, I mean, this is interesting with the... They do send Nice Stalker bottom. He's kind of partnered with a slaughter, but... You know, it seems a little little awkward almost. He got going up against Chaos Knight, Coddle, already a lot of pressure on the Night Stalker. Is this going to be an issue for Night Stalker, you feel? Yes. He's landing versus Keeper. <laughs> Always going to be an issue. Keeper is incredibly difficult to deal with in lane. Especially at this level with these Keepers. Like, they, the way they jungle and the way they, like, blast from the fog is just... You, it's just really difficult to deal with. You can't really dodge it uh, if they're really good about their blasts. And Pilot is one of the better support players, I would say, in the EU region. And I don't know. The things that you can do with Keeper is just ridiculous. Yeah. I think. Hey, uh oh, Slaughter. He's running on the uphill. Come with me. He needs to be careful about that. Of course, Chaos are there pinging out as if they want to make a play. He does have the combo, the Reality Rift, and the Chaos Bolt. So. Um, going back to Cuddle, you can't you can't contest the pull. Like he's he's gonna he can just blast yeah. this, and then you take damage and he gets a creep. Like how how do you stop that? You you just can't. Like if you're even Cheshire Cat trying to come around and uh, maybe interrupt it with a void, but it doesn't really matter. Like you can just uh, I don't know keep this. Well, we're not talking about keeper enough, so I want to keep talking about it here. Uh, no, but the the lack of mana leak being picked up lately by a lot of keeper players earlier on in the game, I feel like has kind of been a trend too. Have you noticed that? And Screw mana leak. One hundred yeah. fifty mana. Especially if you dual lane, like if they dual lane, you just you can just stand there. It's not a big deal. Okay. Uh, because dual lanes have been very popular nowadays. So I think if it's like a solo off laner, especially some of the weak ones. Uh, maybe some like Centaur too. Centaur's been pretty common recently. Then I think it's okay. But I think uh, the Chakra just wins your lane a lot more, along with the Illuminate. Because like Mana Lake, you can't contest a neutral stack with it either. I think Illuminate's a lot more flexible. Uh, he didn't get the small camp double stack off because the Solar blocked it. So this is actually slowing him down a decent amount, not being able to get three that fast. But they're bringing Puppy in down here, and it is just. A solo Night Stalker, sort of wrapping around mid lane. Mid one a little bit low, but I, yeah, it's uh. going to be really hard unless he gets like a double tango into a stun. Yeah. Oof, that's really tough. And he has to not use his chains on him. That's true, yeah. And not bottle up. Yeah, it's just too many years. <laughs> A lot of things need to work out for, for Come With Me there, but uh, he is being patient. I mean, he's, he's chilling nearby. He wants to get it, but meanwhile, bottom lane. 
We do have the actual first blood coming out on tonight. Stalker, as he goes down. You mentioned Puppy going in there earlier on, and uh, it was just about a matter of time before they eventually got it. Now Slaughter is going to be found, and mid one will be fine as a result. So they they knew that Slaughter was around because no one helped the Night Stalker. Night Stalker just died on his own. So what is Slaughter doing? Either jungling, taking bounty runes, or harassing mid. He doesn't have Iron Talent, so he's not jungling. He's not close to the four minute mark, so he's not taking bounty. So the only other place for him to be is mid. Yeah, so look at Night Stalker too. Yeah, again with the, the double mango on him as well, <laughs> ready to get that regen kicking in. But hasn't really had the opportunity to to use them necessarily. As Bounty Hunter gonna keep roaming around, of course, going up here trying to find that slaughter. Not gonna find him though, as he's running the other direction, picking up that bounty rune. Going towards the middle instead. Puppy is trying to keep tabs on the slaughter. He knew that he took the uh, bounty rune, or was it around that area? And there is a smoke. Is he gonna pop it? He immediately pops it. <gasps> And they do have a dust puppy. Okay, this he could is be a turn wondering kill. how the hell they knew he was there, <laughs> but he will at least pop w with the clarity. Oh, he actually might get away. No. Oh, he missed the crush, and now the turn. Okay, they get it. He got a raise too, but he dra <laughs> he dragged him closer to the tower. That was actually pretty cool. Yeah. By Insania to give him that little bit of extra true sight by dragging him closer to the tower. Much Hopefully needed there. Oh, middle lane, actually. Mid one could go down. The second race connects. There's a void coming out for the Night Stalker, and down he goes. It is nighttime, and they take advantage of that immediately. So that's a great rotation. Of course, what you like to see with the first nightfall, especially. Yeah, they're making really good use of the off lanes because they know they can't, they can't really stop the pulls, and they can't really stop Chaos Knight from farming. So they relegated to at least try and win, win the middle lane. I think they want they would have tried to smoke around mid two before the Ember Spirit hits level six, uh, but unfortunately that window is going to close very soon. Despite it still being nighttime for three minutes, Ember Spirit is almost level six. Almost, almost there. Chaos Knight level five. He still has both those mangoes. That's where it feels like almost like, I guess in hindsight maybe it wasn't necessary to get the two mangoes, but you know it's playing the health regen I guess. The health regen is good. I think it's quite good because Hedra oh, like Ring is. Two region for like almost three times the gold, so it's kind of value. Oh man, they're trying to make decision to go in up here, but he chooses to fall back. And now, come with me, it's gonna fall as a result of that. Yeah, that was Juggernaut was going back and forth. He's like, I want to dive with you, bro, but I also don't want to. <laughs> he chose yeah. not to. Maybe if he were six, they could have made it quick and clean. Yes. But unfortunately, he is not. A bounty Hunter, is he going to get the chicken's kill? Oh, no. he knows it's around there, and Proto to also know that he is around there. Yeah, you know, sit in the trees. Obviously, when you're going against a Bounty Hunter, you really have to keep tabs on that courier. I'll take that. Especially with Puppy playing A. He's known for hunting those couriers, and not going to get that one there, though. So. Try to use a skin. Is he going to walk into it? No, he's not. No. Here comes the silence, though, and now Ember Spirit, level 6, but with the silence, of course, unable to use the Remnant, wow. and he will go down. So That was a really good use of skin, too, because they knew that, like, the Slaughter was like, I'm not sure if he knows that I'm here or not, so rather than uh, dusting prematurely or dropping a sentry, they use a skin to make sure that their presence is unknown. That was really cool. Yeah, good heads up there from Pro Dutta, and, well, 3-2 to two lead. Obviously, they're addressing this Ember Spirit. Here in the middle lane as he's now 0-2-0, so kind of keeping him in check, and it most certainly is working as, oh, they're collapsing on the Coddle right here as a lift coming out from Insania, throws him down the crush. It did actually hit, that was pretty far distance, but they do connect, they get the kill on the Coddle, now they need to run, that's going to be a lot easier said than done. The Black Hole comes out, and there's no stopper despite him being nearby, but the damage coming out from Mick A, as Sutter gets pulled back in, the double kill for mid one, but he's being turned on out. The Omni Slash bouncing to the background, gets the kill onto him, and Puppy... Gonna pop that uh, that go that shadow walk away and be fine, but well, numbers wise, that worked out for Pro Dota. Looks like they are making so much happen during the nighttime too. That was a pretty decent black hole, but they didn't have enough burst into there. The Ember Spirit only had one remnant down there at the time, and Caudal was already dead, so they didn't have the illuminate. CK didn't even TP, so great black hole, but no follow up from them. And that was on their shrine. That was not a fight that they wanted to lose. Yeah, um, but it is circling in on daytime in just about 10 seconds or so and pilot i will get the d ward but this is not really the early game that secret would have wanted they definitely don't want an ember spirit with three deaths right now yeah it's pretty evident that that of course it's just they picked up an ice soccer maybe because coddle was picked up on the other side but at the same time it wasn't just like a blind pickup of like well yeah this is night against day oh, it's top good top lane kazu and pilot i in a little bit of trouble <laughs> 
No corrosive haze just yet for Slaughter, so the amp damage not going to be working. But yeah, they're trying to set up here, but you can tell with hugging the tower, they know something's up. We're going to be pushing on now a little bit, though, so perhaps an opening to be had. Yeah, they have to be very careful, though. One TP, I think, will be probably too much for them to handle at, the, at this juncture. Oh, they're going to cut to the river, actually. Yeah, they, they know now. Casey realizing crap. He's in a bad spot. Can he get the stun off? He cannot first. The nice blinding light pushback, though. We'll throw the stun on to come with me, and that's going to be enough to scare him off. Illuminate from a distance from Coddle, and no kill on there as a result. Middle lane, meanwhile, they do get the kill on a Mickey. As they dive in pretty aggressively, it looks like Chaos Knight, of course, assisting with that. The Phantasm being used. And Good track job. time. And they're going to the top lane. Look at that Juggernaut. He will be able to spin out and TP away, but that good movement here coming out from the Radiant side now. Oh, oh does on Puppy, but a little too far away as that track is put up. Get out of there. Track move speed. Strong. He's good. We had at the top lane again. He got uh, recalled up here by Coddle after that middle cover pretty much right away and now going to play, uh, play aggressive at the top lane. So this Chaos Knight, he's... Definitely being aggressive with the team as Puppy. He's making his way up here, too. He notices Garter running up here in the Juggernaut, as well as Cheshire Cat. It was a nice vision for the team. All five of them are collapsing in, though. There goes that track going to be wearing off now on a slaughter. Trying to run away. Can he maybe get a blind stun on Enigma? Absolutely not. He ports out. They don't have uh, they don't have hole. They also don't have positioning. Like Keeper can't like blast into them because they're coming in from uh, like three directions: the right side, the southeast side, and the south side. So yeah. that was uh, definitely the right play to back off. Armlet being purchased here by MP, of course, playing the Chaos Knight. Treads armlet. Makes your illusions very strong, and it gives you a ton of armor versus the SF, Slaughter, and the Juggernaut. Overall, one of the better builds, I think. Especially when you have Caudal. Darkness has fallen as another relocate in, though, actually coming out, and Slaughter is going to feel the pain as a result. Chaos Knight getting pulled on in from Caudal and doing a lot of work in the background. Ember Spirit, he's chasing Insania. Uh, the Rubik will also be illuminated down and making it a two for nothing. So, again, great movement, great response from Secret. Another relocate. They're really taking advantage of the recall, excuse me. Yeah, Coddle. keeper broken. Recall. <laughs> like, uh, it's like, oh, okay, I'm looking for the Coddle. Oh, wait, there's a CK that are waiting for me. That, that must be fun. Yeah, because of that ability. So bring them on in and ready to fight. And now this top tower, it's also ready to fall. No defense being put up by Pro Dota. Understandable. Just going to let this one go up here, but... Help of the Dominator is being worked on by Garner. Again, a lot of fighting going on, so definitely a different game. As that was a Requiem used in the middle. Not really getting anything out of it, though. I don't know if Pilot Eye was walking in. He thought he had a chance right there, but now actually Puppy's going to be found. Sitting with the Evans on top. The track is up, though. The Reality Rift pull in. There's a Phantasm. And they got the kill of Shadow Fiend. That's going to be big. A lot of gold going around. Got two illusions. Yeah. That's a little bit too RNG for my liking, actually. <laughs> it's one of the more... Oh, I guess Chaos Knight. I mean, his name is Chaos, but... Yes. That's the point. That's probably one of the most RNG spells in the game. And that's Chaos Knight in general. <laughs> yeah. li likes that RNG. Definitely it can work out as, uh, as it did there, of course, though. And obviously Shadow Fiend feeling the pain. And despite losing the tower, definitely a victory for Team Secret. So the early start with the rotations from Night Stalker was looking pretty good. But notice how since it's been the next daytime, yes. it's been the advantage for the other side. So it's going to be in shifts, it almost feels like. Uh, they have the hole out too, so they can still fight during nighttime. Uh oh, that had a little bit of lag. Kezu also has his mech complete already. I wonder actually what the bounty hunter is gonna go if he doesn't have the. If he, they already have the mech, maybe Solar Crest. Oh, Solar Crest is so good here. Yeah. Mm, Solar Crest. <laughs> Great out of amping that damage, but also the evasion. Nice benefit to have. Roche too. Yeah. Roche is so good. Ember Spirit. He gets caught up here. The. <laughs> Uh, net onto him even as you see the Humble the Dominator making use of that with the Dark Troll Summoner but Garter realizing that more, ne more is nearby and he'll fall back but how about this Ember Spear by the way he went right into bots here with the Ring of Aquila no uh, no Veil pick up yet that's not a spell little, it's definitely a little bit unusual especially because he has Keeper uh, we've seen some of them go like Treads and a little bit more tanky build but I guess he's going to rely on the Chaos Knight to be in the front line and wants to up his efficiency Radiant's a lot the BOTs Save the recall for Chaos Knight. Yeah. Got this push, though, from this Radiant side. It's definitely effective, and they get another tower kill as a result. 
And not much that, again, the, the Dyer can do to stop it, it seems like, right now. But again, it is nighttime. Puppy, though, going to scout out a couple over here. Another dust goes out, though, but it was just out of range. Top lane. Ooh. From the fog. That was a very nice Chaos Bolt. They he has a Chaos Bolt from like, the southeast and then drug him into it. But those were tr those were trees over there, so he had no time to react with the spin. Yeah, great catch there. And again, Puppy also going to walk away with really no harm. He's continued to be a nuisance. He wanted to pick off that Courier, but not going to happen. But you can just tell the map control right now for Team Secret is definitely on point. At this, uh, at this time, Point Booster already picked up by Coddle with that set, so the Axe is coming along very nicely for him right here. As Insania's roaming on through, he actually stole the Shadow Walk. That's why he's invis. And, oh, yeah, nice pilot. I actually snipes that bounty root right in front of him, meanwhile. Unable to get it right there. Shadow Fiend, though, what does he have? He has a Dragon Lance, and he's working right into a BKB, so feeling like he needs the, the combat items here. Ready to fight as top lane, though, collapse on. Silence comes out on a Keeper of the Light, but in comes Ember Spirit. The Reality Rift pull back in the background. They will lock down for the kill on a Night Stalker. Sodar, come with me. Throws out a crush, but he track just wants to run after no. that. Once again, the Reality Rift pulls him back in. The track hold coming out. Double kill for Puppy. And talk about excelling. They are definitely excelling now. One thing that's also a sick combo with Keeper is like the if you use the Chakra Magic on the Ember Spirit, you can double root them for six seconds. Oh, nice. It is quite crazy. And a uh, spin out there. That was... That was really nice chains by mid one. He got the like the double chains mid remnant onto two of the heroes. That was a really sick play. Mm -hmm. High skill Ember <laughs> in action. Doing work here, and he has that maelstrom coming along. So yeah, it's gonna pass up the Villa Discord as a whole. It seems like uh, not maybe not as much of a fan as others. Yeah, it tended to be over time, but again, that kind of seemed to be the the flavor build for the for the post 7.0 for the longest. But yeah, maybe because it's a uh his other cores don't do that much magic damage. Enigma, his, his Midnight Pulse is pure, and then Chaos Knight does very little magic damage. So maybe, n I, I think it's really good for like Keeper and Bounty though, but eh. Maelstrom helps him farm a lot faster too. What do we think of the uh, choice to go right into the BKB here for Shadow Fiend post oh, the Dragonlance? I think he needs it versus yeah. the CK. LCK would just blow you up. Like, there's nothing you can do as a Shadow Fiend versus a CK with Tread's armlet. He just armlets, even if he only gets one illusion, like, if you get stunned, you're dead. You don't have no save on your team. Like, I, I agree with this build. It's gonna make him a little bit light on the damage, but that's what Amplify is for. And they're giving out they're hemorrhaging track kills. I mean, I mean, look at how deep they are. <laughs> it's all the way to yeah. the tier three, just about. Bounty hunter and keeper is just way too much map control. Yeah. Look, you see anyone that you want to kill? Okay, BOTN recall, and there's four people right there within three seconds. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. Behind a tier two tower, they can just do it so freely. Shadowfiend mean, might die here. Dude, he has a haste. Oh, he does have a haste bottle. He has a double damage activated too, so the double rune, but. Not going to really get the benefit out of it, but yeah, with the haste rune, hopefully he should be able to get away if he gets caught there, or ideally, I should say. As bottom lane, mid one, he's going to scare off Garter. Garter probably feels like, okay, yeah, Bounty Hunter could be nearby, and you always have to be guessing about that. And they've definitely been feeling the pain as a result. Kids, you go over to the top lane, trying to pick off Slaughter, but he cannot get close enough for that Malefice. Another one of those games where Slaughter is not going to be able to get Blink for a long time. Yeah. He is definitely having trouble with that. Shadow Fiend, he wants to make a play up here. They would love to kill Chaos Knight. Out comes across face. Like, all right, you want to fight? Let's fight, baby. The illusions come out with the Phantasm. There goes the Requiem of Souls. But down goes Slaughter pretty quickly. MP, he's going to be lifted up, though. You see Enigma running in. He has a black hole ready to go, but it's going to be tough to get a good one off right there. Chaos Knight finally picked off. That's a nice bounty coming out for the other side, being Night Stalker. And the chase continues. Keizu, again, he has that black hole. <laughs> Could set up a turn for perhaps if the support comes in, but. No, he's going to be silenced, and he will be nuked down with the Rays. Pro Dota, that's a good victory for them. That was bad communication from Team Secret. They, uh, firstly, recall was down. They didn't have the, uh, the ultimate up on Keeper. And secondly, Mail, uh, Ember Spirit used his BOT to go home to get his, uh, get his Maelstrom. So they weren't able to bring the Ember Spirit at all. Uh, which would have been pretty good for them because he could he could have just changed them into a position where they could have gotten uh, black hold with the Enigma, but uh, they were just not on the same page right there. Oh, they're running down Garter up here at the top lane. Now comes those chains, but gonna get the spin off. They know when it's down though. He's gonna be pretty vulnerable right here. So the mana leak being used, the heal war put down, but he's gonna take a stun from that mana leak and the burn, baby burn.
with the Remnant right in the face. So easy kill on a Juggernaut in the end. Track gold. <laughs> Once again. Track gold. I wish there was a stat to like, keep track of track gold. Yeah, there, sh there should, should be. be. One of these days we'll get it. It's been a lot. It's been probably three. Maybe not three. Though. Oh my gosh. Yes. What do you do? You have to get BKB. Or Shadow Blade or Blink or something. Yeah. Like, BKB is by far the safest for team fights. No, I just, yeah, found by the, uh, found by the Chaos Knight, and the Chaos ensues. Thus he goes down, so it's a tough game for Mickey here. Again, he almost has the BKB finished, but obviously not having it there, so he's slowing down. He talked about the Blink Dagger on Slaughter. He actually almost does have that now. He's also level 10 just about, but finally will get it, but again, it's not like they have the Lifestealer Bomb to go with it. It's just going to be a decent initiation tool here. They don't really have any follow-up, though, which kind of sucks. That's true. For them, because you stun into question mark <laughs> into a requiem. I guess would be ideal. Maybe with like a shadow blade initiation. Yeah, but obviously that's a ways off as we keep looking at right here. So, now you're right though. Yeah, the follow up does seem fairly weak for sure at this point at least. And they're gonna take out Roshan here in the meantime. Oh Why yeah, not? puppy Solar Crest. He likes it too. Solar Crest is so good. It it completely counters level one amplify. Or, yeah, level 1 Corrosive Haze. Okay. And probably level 2 as well because of the evasion. So it's also just really good for Roshan for CG like this. Because CK actually died a, a lot of damage last fight. Yeah, it's obviously great for a hero like this too. It's kind of being sneaky in the in the back lines here and trying to amp that damage up for quick kills or you know even help teammates if it calls for it. So... Definitely seems like overall a great tool, and I know it did get some buffs recently too. So yeah, that item is so much value now. Oh my goodness, I actually think that item is very good. Mickey trying to run them down. He's not too afraid. He does have that BKB now. Slaughter jumped in, but he gets done immediately. The reality would pull in, and he just melts in a matter of seconds. You see, the three phantasms are out. The requiem of souls. He gets it off, but it's just too late. He dies right after the follow-up damage. Again, it's not really the greatest. A lot of bounces from that Omni Slash, a lot of illusions to bounce to. Mitigating plenty of damage. Another reality rift pull in. It's it's almost like we got a, a mini pudge here of sorts, just pulling everyone in. They didn't have any way they can't clear the illusions. Like those those just destroyed the CK during the Requiem. That was sad. Or during the BKB rather. Yeah. Uh, Shadow Fiend melted and the rest followed, obviously. Yeah. As we saw, so Team Secret, all the momentum in the world at this point, and you, you always like to, in cases like this, obviously you like to try to give hope for the other side of Pro Dota, and <laughs> where's the uh, where's the comeback mechanic? But it's uh, looking grim. One of the things that they didn't prepare for well is the lack of AOE. They didn't have a lack, they didn't have uh, AOE in their draft, and they also didn't prepare for it in their item build. Juggernaut, we talked about it last time, that Hamadon build. It's a good item, but it's not always the build. And this game, yeah. I also don't think it was the build. I think like Battle Fury or Maelstrom is kind of imperative on this hero against this Chaos Knight, or else you're always just going to be destroyed. Like, how are you going to Omni Slash and do those like really tanky illusions? You have to be able to clear them somehow, mm -hmm. and Requiem is simply not enough for them. So, it, it's, it's not it wasn't an easy game for them to begin with because of the draft. No A Weaver CK and giving out Keeper, I think, are just really. Uh, big mi big Dyer's mistakes in their draft, but it, uh, again, it can be compensated through by good play, Dyer's like not giving up 10 fall. plus track kills and yeah. building some AOE. Uh, but may maybe soon, maybe Juggernaut will be able to get it after his Manta style. Um, but right now, it is looking like the gold lead is getting close to that point where P Pro Dota can't even go outside their base even during Dyer's nighttime. Oh, with that said, he does have the Axe. He does have a gem now. He just purchased on the Night Stalker. That is so. Yeah, maybe they can actually kill the kill the bounty hunter a few times. But I mean, he's pretty tanky though. Like <laughs> that's true. Twelve hundred HP and Solar Crest is uh, it's like it's not easy to kill them at all. Like kind of attempt right there, but not really. It's just a quick stun and then fall back. Yeah. From Slaughter. If they had like Blink BKB Black Hole on Enigma, like there is very little chance of Prodota winning a team fight. But he went Greaves and. Went and went into a Midas afterwards. I wonder if he's going to get cooldown reduction or GPM at 15. Cooldown reduction just seems like overall one of the best talents to get, at like on any hero. It so is, but he hasn't used Black Hole except for once this True. Game. So it does also affect items though, and I think that's why one yeah. of the reasons that makes it so good. Oh, I, I mean, I'm I'm totally on board. Yeah. However, this game they're they're not really fighting that much. True. So I think 
Like, if he has Blink BKB, he can actually get off the Black Holes. I don't know. It's uh, Cooldown reduction, I would say, you can never really go wrong with Cooldown Exactly. Reduction. I'm never yeah. going to say that's a bad decision. <laughs> but it's, neither one's going to be a bad decision yeah, here. Neither one's going to be a bad decision. It's safe to say. Oh, we got oh my <laughs> well, god. Rubik no longer exists right now. Uh, mega kill streak for MP, and this tower push is going to be pretty easy. Again, Enigma Black Hole is a threat here, so they want to be careful about committing to a fight. They have to do something, though. Ooh, nice silence. Oh, well, maybe not, I mean maybe they are comfortable enough to say, you know what, you're gonna have one of our racks that's inevitably gonna happen. Now they want to kind of fight right here. The stun initiation on the Chaos Knight. Illusions are still up though, and the melee racks is gonna be dropping right here most likely. There goes a BKB pop, jumps onto the Shadow Fiend, and once again just melts. He doesn't have his own BKB. He buys back immediately though, and the BKB is coming up in 10 seconds. Darkness has fallen now, and the chase out. The crush gonna miss right there. He actually went in, but he got stopped with the blink dagger, I believe. And thus the crush was not able to connect. Chaos Knight thrown in the air, but, but again, he has the Aegis, so worst case he dies right here. He's coming right back up anyways. Not necessarily that big of a deal. Carter bouncing around with the army side. There's the black hole going off. It's not gonna be stopped. The counter black hole actually from Insania coming out though, so maybe give them a shot. In comes the Requiem of Souls. And down goes actually Chaos Knight. He's gonna come back up though, as mentioned. Carter will tear through the Ember Spirit. And now Chaos Knight all of a sudden he is in a pretty vulnerable spot. He may have fallen right here. As a spin on top of it, going for the perhaps turn kill. The, the bolt comes out, the illuminate through. Not going to be enough, and down goes Chaos Knight. All right. Oh, man. That's one of those fights where the Rubik plays a better Enigma than your Enigma. <laughs> mm. Insania over Kezu. Kezu is not my favorite player, actually. But that was not – it wasn't – that black hole was not necessary at all. Maybe he thought he was going to get a few more on the sidelines. Yeah. Uh, but one of the problems is he did go. He's going. Is he going for a heart afterwards on the Enigma? Is that for real? That cannot be. For heart. Real. Wow. Yeah. That, that is curious. Okay. Yeah. That what? I'm looking. Okay. Yeah. It's right next to Octarine Core on the shop. <laughs> but, um, yeah. He's clicking through. He he now has a Lincoln queued up. So. Yeah. The heart would have been pretty odd for sure. Yeah. I'm not going for that here. That. That fight should have been way easier. I think if they just don't use Black Hole, they would have been better off. Rubik does not have a blink. Like, he <laughs> just has to sit there and yeah. just wait for the hole. And that's exactly what he did because Kezu played into it. Uh, but, I mean, they, they blew out the Shadow Fiend. They got the melee Renax. They got the buyback on him. Uh, but still not the end of the game, I would say. Like, if they if that fight went cleanly, they could just steamroll through yeah. to another Renax. But now they're actually still going to have to play pretty cautiously. They give the other team a little bit of hope is essentially getting out there. And yeah, that's so pro Dota. They have a reason to continue on and continue to play here. In fact, a pick off on the Chaos Knight once again would be more than enough of another reason. But yeah, there's a Phantasm. And with that BKB, just goes in on to Slaughter. And that's a quick kill as a result. The reality of pulling Coddle, meanwhile. He's going to run away, though, with a blinding light pushback because it has that support coming in. They know this, but they cannot get away in time. Down goes the Sania. Yeah, there's another kill on to the Night Stalker. And the Requiem of Souls not going to be nearly enough. It will mitigate their damage a little bit. But it's still going to fall, so triple kill yeah. for MP. Shadow Fiend seems so useless. I don't know what yeah. would have been a better pick than Shadow Fiend. You're right, yeah. It's like they needed a hero with AUE that does decently in mid versus Ember. But Shadow Fiend is like, he's just been getting wailed on by Chaos Knight all game. And his game did not go that badly. They ganked, the, they killed the Ember like two or three times. So it's, it's definitely not like a player skill thing. In my eyes. No, I, I don't so think that I, is either, yeah. It's just it's just weird that he just ended up being so useless. Same with the slaughter. Like I've never seen a slaughter with a blink be like, that's not gonna like it's, it's <laughs> just useless. Nothing. It doesn't do anything for his team, which is weird. Yeah. Because usually it's like, oh my god, slaughter has blink. But this game this doesn't like it's whatever. The follow up wasn't there. I mean that early game did start to get a little bit out of control and I think it's just we're just also seeing that. The scaling is just so much better at this point. I mean look at that, the Omni Slash. He just did nothing Omni? basically. <laughs> That's sad. Might as well not even use it. The Omnisash hurt him more than helped him in that case. And this is going to be another melee racks, and I think this is the beginning of the end now for Team Secret. Yep. Again, as I like to say, taking care of business, as they no doubt were the favorites here. Going to take the game off of Pro Dota Gaming. So, I mean, PD, though, th this is a team, again, they qualified out of the open qualifiers, and you're facing one of the favorites here in Team Secret right off the bat. They uh, they gave a little bit of justification as to maybe why their team to to look out for somewhat, but their team play was not bad at all in the mid game. I, I just think you have to take keeper first over Sardar in a hundred percent of cases. Even if you don't have a keeper player, I still think you could. Do it. <laughs> like, it's, the hero is just too too ridiculous. If you don't have a keeper player, then you ban it. 
I think it's the other point. Yeah. Take it away as an option, perhaps. But, yeah, that's going to be a GG well play being called, and it's official. Team Secret will start 1-0 here in the group stages. So, again, doing their job and uh, taking the victory over Pro Dota. But, again, a lot of matches to play, so don't look too much into this over these next couple of days right here. But uh, still a strong